these chain rings are bent or this crank is like about to fall off. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Biking Roots. The sun has returned to Houston and it's like 70 degrees out there, but I think we have a cold front coming in tonight. But welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Texas. Uh, today, though, we are going to talk about cheap mountain bikes uh, and particularly cheap full suspension mountain bikes, like really, really cheap mountain bikes. I've been meaning to make this video for a while now, but it's been very busy. About a year ago, I purchased two uh, Walmart full suspension mountain bikes. Uh, the two bikes that I purchased were these guys. This is a Hyper Hydroform 29er, and this one, which is also a Hyper Hydroform. All right, so this bike started out as this bike and they had a sale they were normally 200 dollars uh they had a sale for 150 bucks i thought well eh, for 150 bucks a 29 inch full suspension mountain bike how bad could it be the, the test was to see if i could how bad this bike was because for 150 dollars i wasn't expecting much and to see with a lot of parts <laughs> inexpensive parts could you make it a trail at least a trail worthy mountain bike uh, for less than like 750 bucks some of you may be just getting into mountain biking or maybe you have a older hardtail front suspension mountain bike and you thought well I want to get a full suspension but I don't have a ton of cash so is it worth getting a cheap bike that I can upgrade getting a used bike or just saving up to get a $1,500 you know Marin Rift Zone 1 uh, all right so we'll talk about it hyper hydroform uh hydro i don't the hydroform is actually it's a way of shaping uh the frame i don't know why they decided to call it but they also called it a ultra lightweight which i'll talk about the weight in a little bit uh it is far from lightweight and i definitely would not call it ultra but maybe compared to other bikes it is uh so just going over the specs you have 29 inch wheels uh you have no name tires you have a Shimano seven speed. Uh, this is a freewheel and it's like a, t I don't even know how many teeth, 20 something teeth, seven speed tourney derailleur, three speed front derailleur, uh, very cheap pedals. And you have a big spring shock. Uh, up front you have HPR suspension, which who knows who that is. And here you have your shifters three speed so this is a 21 speed and you have at least you have a threadless uh steer tube which is not bad some pros on the bike it actually has quick release in the front and the back which on some cheap very inexpensive big box store bikes you do not get uh, quick release you have to deal with a threaded uh, nut threaded axles that go in here Brake wise, you have JAX, whoever that is, uh, mechanical disc brakes. One of the cons with buying a Walmart bike or a lot of big box store bikes is this is the only size frame you get. Uh, I'm 5'8, this bike is a little big on me. They say it's for people six foot and up. I don't know about that, but you get one size, so there you go. Uh, you don't have other options. It's not a great quality frame, I'll just say that. The frame is very inexpensive. You can see where it's just cheap paint. Uh, there's some indentations in the metal. All right, and here's the bike that I created. What I did was I stripped it down to the frame. I took everything off, uh, got it down to the frame, and upgraded a whole bunch of stuff. So I'll start with what's original to the bike. Original to the bike are the tires. Seat post is original with the quick release. Uh, the grips I just left, those are original, and the stem is also original. What a lot of inexpensive bikes come with from big box stores, and I would caution people against buying for this particular reason, is these, especially in big wheels, these are single wall wheels, so that means there's just a thin layer of aluminum that goes around here, so they're not very strong, especially when you get big sizes. All the time we have people that come in with these, these wheels that are just bent, Single wall wheels, uh, they had to go. So I actually bought some very inexpensive uh, double wall uh, rims off of eBay. They cost like, uh, I'll have all the pricing, but they cost like 90 bucks, I think. Moving in the front, uh, 
I decided to go with an inexpensive air shock from uh, SR Suntour. So Suntour makes a bunch of shocks. They have some high-end stuff and they're known for having a bunch of really junky cheap stuff that they put on bikes. This is their inexpensive air shock. So it's lightweight. It's not super great, but it works and it's a heck of a lot better than what this heavy thing is. So I changed out to, I got this off eBay for like 170 bucks. All right, so wider handlebars was another upgrade that we did. These are 720 millimeter bars. The ones that were on there, these were like 600 and something, I forget. They're, they're, very, they're pretty narrow for this big of a bike. Some people had talked and recommended uh, this shock, which is from DNM. So it's an air shock, very inexpensive. I got it off of Amazon that was kind of like a return refurbished type thing. It looked brand new. Uh, so yeah, anyway, air shock that replaced this heavy spring thing that I don't know if it would actually do anything. I've actually haven't ridden this bike. Uh, I will in a little bit, but replaced it with this air shock. And also the crank was replaced, went to a one by, replaced it with this generic IXF crank set and a external cup bottom bracket, which is a lot lighter than this crank setup for the drivetrain i went with the inexpensive so not i didn't go very big uh i may go bigger but for around here i thought well 36 tooth is fine olivia derailleur so no clutch i took a gamble not doing a clutch to save cost but went with the narrow wide so hopefully it's stiff enough and doesn't fall off and also changed the pedals out uh, just some inexpensive generic pedals as these pedals were garbage. Brake wise, I decided to upgrade the mechanical disc. You didn't have to, but those mechanical discs did not seem very promising. Uh, so I just went with some inexpensive Tektro hydraulic. Is this worth a $550 upgrade? Yeah, definitely upgrading the shock and the rear, the rear shock as well. The drivetrain, the wheels. Uh, it's going to be a lot better bike. Now, you still have compromises here on a nice bike. You're going to have bearings that are in here and these pivots. These are not bearings. These are little plastic uh, bushing uh, as opposed to in here. You're going to have bearings in these pivot joints, which are be a lot smoother and they're going to last a lot longer. I don't know what's going to happen in the long term with these bushings. And if they do break, where are you going to find them? <laughs> Good question. I don't know. Yeah, so less than 750 bucks, we'll say. Uh, have a, is it trail capable? Is it good enough for most people? Would I trust this bike on the trails? Well, yes, I would. And I have ridden on the trails. Would I trust it down like Spider Mountain, like a bike park? Eh, don't know if I would. All right, I'm gonna go for a quick ride on the Hypers. First, the uh, stock $150 bike, and then the upgraded $750 bike and see how they compare. I've ridden this on the trail. I'll show the video on that. I've never ridden this one on anything. So I guess I should at least test it. All right. I came back to grab the camera because <laughs> that uh, these chain rings are bent or this crank is like about to fall off. <laughs> Right, this isn't a trail, this is just next to our shop. Alright, so otherwise the shifting is garbage. The suspension, like, it doesn't even move. The spring is worthless. <laughs> if you're just going around at the neighborhood with the kids, then it's fine. But if you're going to go out on a trail, <laughs> yeah, good luck. And I think I'd rather keep my $150. <laughs> and put it towards something else. All right, now my Frankabike Hyper. Oh yeah, so much smoother. <laughs> I actually have suspension that works. See that? <laughs> it actually moves. Definitely a lot better. <laughs> All right, 
right, that was interesting and about what I expected. Like I said, I've never ridden them side by side like that. Uh, and I just rode them for just a little bit because that one has serious problems. I mean, it's a fun little cross country bike. Is it worth $750? Or would I put the $750 towards a $1,500 bike? If you're on a tight budget and you don't mind sourcing parts from eBay and other sources, and you don't mind the labor into putting it all together, you have all the tools, Tools is one thing. You gotta make sure you have all these tools. I forgot to mention that. If you like this video, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to our channel if you wanna help us out. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Widowmaker. <laughs> oh.